All right, guys. So today is the day you've finally been waiting for. We are going to be working on the E36. Um, we've been kind of waiting on stuff, but it still hasn't come in the mail. We're waiting for his coil pack harness, but we're going to try to get the E36 cranking over today. So that way, when the coil pack comes in, we hook them up. It'll get spark. We hook up fuel, and it should run. So that's the plan. We just picked up some oil. Let me show you guys real quick. So we have the plug and play harness. Right here is our start. This is our start signal. So on the solenoid it goes to the little one. And then we have our main start power right here, which is the power to the starter. And then it's grounded through the motor to the chassis. So we're gonna hook that up. We're gonna screw down his power block today. We're also gonna cut out a hole in here. It's kind of hard to show you guys. So in here is where the ECU is, but it's, hang on, you guys can't see. So right in here is where the ECU sits in the engine bay. So we're going to cut this out so his HP tuner can plug into the OBD2 port so we can actually tune his ECU. So that is the plan for today and also the shirts and all the merch is still available. The link will be in the description. It's available all week long. So if you haven't picked up anything yet, make sure you guys go ahead and do that. Let's get started on the E36. Yeah, I got to give you your shirt. I'm going to go get it. Alright, so this is the shirt. You guys have probably all seen it, but I forgot to give Zach his shirt. Open it up real quick, because I'm sure a bunch of people are going to be watching this, because they're excited for the LF. So this is the flower edition, and we also have the girls' crop top that matches it as well. We should all get garage stylers tattooed. Garage stylers. I'm just kidding. I'm scared of needles. So we're going to hook up the starter wires and the start signal. We're going to put oil in it. We're going to hook up the ECU, and we're going to cut that out. Right, so, like I said, we have to cut out his thing. So this is for the ECU, and then right here is the check engine light and the OBD2. <laughs> so, what? back in where the ECU goes, there's like a hole, and we're just going to cut it like a little bit bigger to where we can get this plug Watch through there. The hole right there. And then we'll just screw it like to the side, and then this will just be like that, and then this little plug. You know what's funny? This plug could screw through that hole probably. All right, so Zach, don't cut on the actual hole. Cut a little bit next to the hole and make like, like a right here. No, no, next to it. Like, don't use the actual yeah. hole. Cut next to the hole and make a rectangle hole. Next to what hole? Zach, the fucking hole in your fire. Where, right here. Put your finger through the hole. You see that hole right yeah. there, Zach? You feel the hole. I feel the hole. Next to the hole, about two inches where there's no hole. To make the a right or to the left? To the right. Make a rectangle hole. There you go, a right A rectangle there. hole? Yes, a rectangle hole, not a circle hole. Why? For the fucking OBD2 plug. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so he just cut it out. Oh. Let me see. It's big enough. I think it's too square. Yeah, I think it's too square too. Well, you can go in sideways. No, no, you can go in sideways. Oh. Shit, I put it in upside down. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> All right, so we're about to cut the bracket out for the ECU so it can actually fit in there. That might not be the permanent location for it, but for right now, it'll work. If this fits. Oh, shit, that's a short. I think I just broke the whole plate off of this bottom. I did. What's that's good? I can't believe this whole thing just broke. I mean, that's, that's good, but... Dude, I'm a pain. That works. Okay, so it's red in there. Here, you go on the inside. Here, Zach. I'm gonna try to. I can't really. Here, I can actually lift them in here. I'll put this in my way. Hang on, I have to put. I can't see. There you go. All right. Now we can actually hook up the ECU and put it in there too. Big fun camera, man. So yeah, next, man, so we're gonna put the uh, ECU in there, and then we're gonna screw this power block down with like self tappers, just probably somewhere around like right there, and we'll be good. All right, so as you guys can see, back in, oh, you guys, let me see if I can zoom in. You guys can't see. Well, down there, I hooked up the starter thing to the solenoid. Now I just have to hook up the main start wire, and we should be good to go to almost crank it over. Go. All right, so we got a starter bolted up. We got the start signal and the main power. Uh, I think it's like 12 volts all the time. I'm not too sure. But uh, we got both those hooked up, so now I just got to actually tighten the starter. Hang on one second. We just got to tighten this down. 
All right. So we got the starter tightened down. We got our power sources hooked up to the starter. So if we put the key in right now with the battery, it should crank, but we want to ground it down better. So they gave us a grounding kit. So we don't know specifically where it goes, so we're just going to... Specifically. Specifically, Not yeah. Pacific Ocean. So we're just going to ground it to wherever right now, just to make sure we don't short nothing out. But it should be ready to go to crank over, I'm pretty sure. It's not going to obviously... There's... It's not going to obviously have any chance of starting. There's no spark. There's no fuel. We just literally just want to hear it crank one time. So when his harness comes in, we can hook it up, hook the injectors up, hook the fuel up, um, mass airflow, and it should run. So let's get the grounds on. I feel like I'm zoomed in though. Might be. There it is. Yeah, you're zoomed Good. in. All right, so we're hooking up power to our new power block. Um, pretty much these wires. Let me get this out of the way. These wires go to the new power block. Let's make sure it'll actually sit right. Pretty sure this is how it is, because we got rid of the other power block. And this would be our new source that sends power to the chassis and the uh, engine harness. All right. All right, so we got it hooked up. Ready to go, got all our power sent to it. Make sure nothing's touching, nothing that can get messed up. All right, I think we're good. Let's hook the battery up. All right, so we got it all hooked up. Got our power and stuff running down there. Zach has the battery in, but we think it's dead. You literally put it in the ignition and just try to crank it. I think the battery's completely drained though. Where's the fire extinguisher? We don't have one. I think it, I don't even think it's gonna do anything. I think the battery is completely dead. It's dead. Yeah, I thought so. All right, let's try to get another battery. S All right, so we just got the battery from the IS. Daquan's out there riding bikes. We're about to go kill it later. He's practicing. <laughs> I'm scared. All right, we're putting the IS battery in. We know this one's good, so we should get power. Yeah, I would just pull that out completely. So Zach's gonna hook that up real quick. Everything's ready to go. Like we said before, it's not gonna run, but it should crank. Got all the wires hooked up, the engine's ground it. Everything's ready to go, guys. This is this is exciting. I don't know 100% if it's even gonna crank, so don't be disappointed if it's not. We're still gonna have to mess with it. But uh, I really think it might. I think we should be good. I think we have everything hooked up correctly. So let's see what happens. Yeah, put the power on. Power's on. All right, let's try to crank her. It didn't even spark though. Give me my keys. Well, your battery's not there. Well, that's a good thing if it doesn't. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Let's just see what happens. Scared. It's sending power right now to that block. So the engine is getting power. Nothing? Hmm. It locked me out. All right, so we are back again the next day. Um, yesterday we gave up on the LSE 36 because the guy that we bought the motor from originally actually gave us the wrong ECU and to crank over an LS motor, you need the ECU plugged in to tell it to start. So we couldn't mess with that till we get another ECU, but we're back today and working on the IS300. Back at it again. We gotta switch the um, battles with these wheels because Daquan's taking them back. But these are like way wider than the battles, so they didn't fit in the back at all. They poked literally probably three inches in the back. It's this. But, oh, it's not gonna work with those? I can't run these wheels. Damn, they're too wide. All right, so we're testing the wheels to see which one Zach wants. We're gonna test the battles and the Varstone ES2s on the BMW to see which one actually kind of fits the flare because he runs a spacer already. So that'll tell us which one he kind of wants. Personally, I like the battles better, but these are a little wider. So they might fit better, but we will see. All right, so Zach's gonna put the wheel on. See how much poke it has, how it fits. It's a lot. Can you get one lug nut on? Or will it stay? I'll just hold it up against it. There put the, it oh, there you go. Put the flare on. Dude, that's really wide. That's, I don't think it's wide enough. No, that's definitely Smash. wide enough. That's, yeah, that's wider. Perfect. That'd be pretty good fit, man. Because you don't get camber when you lower the E36 in the rear. So it would sit. Fit, man. It would sit like that. Yeah, now put the battle on. I don't think that's bad. I think that's good. Now try the battle. Alright, so now we're going to try the battle. You got to remember this is a 17, See too. That... And we have a lot cut out. 
Yeah, 17 will fit better, if anything. Why? Because 17s fit good on your car. That fender arch is where your original arch was. Hey, that arch doesn't sit higher. I'm just looking at width right now. I'm not looking at that. Well, it doesn't fit on the hub. It doesn't fit. Oh, it doesn't fit on the hub centric, right? No, with this on. Um, oh, this. Th oh, here, just hold it real quick. That's skinnier, way skinnier, anyways. What do you want? So they would probably look better. All right. So after yesterday, we just went over everything we need for the car. So it's pretty much ready to go to start. Um, we need the ECU because we have the wrong one. That's an 04 Silverado ECU. We need a Denali ECU or um, the, our friend Zach, the other Zach, said that this could possibly be a... When you ordered this, did you tell me you had a truck motor? Truck motor. Okay, then we need a why truck. Wasn't this, why won't the Silverado one work? It's different. It's got, instead of the red plug, it's a green plug. And this is a red and blue. Let's just go to the junkyard. That's fine, it doesn't matter. We just gotta find the right ECU. So we need the ECU to get it to crank over. All right, so yeah, we need the ECU for it to send signal to crank the engine over. We need the coil pack harness, which he already sent out to um, get the coil packs, obviously to get, you know, spark. And then we need um, uh, intake, the mass airflow sensor hooked up, a uh, serpentine belt, and the engine is literally gonna run. We are like right there, and then we can obviously hook up the radiator and everything. So this is definitely a really, really short video, but like, all the stuff is easily accessible that we need, and we already have the cool pack harness on the way. Like, it's ready to run. So hopefully next E36 video, the engine should be cranking over and maybe starting. So look forward to that. And don't forget, the shirts and the merch are available all week, and the link is going to be in the description. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Oh.